John here from Embroidery Legacy and in this font magic video I'm going to show you how you can use one simple ESA font to create a full front applique with mylar and a hand stitch effect. So let's dive in. Now for this design we're going to bring in the cherry script 20 millimeters but I've set it at 70 millimeters in height and I just typed in the letters and this is how it came in with the spacing between each of the letters. So while it is selected I just have the uh, object selected right now and I'm going to hit the H key which will allow me to bring in, once I hit H, it'll bring in each of the letters so I can just grab on one of those little uh, pink diamonds and I can bring it across and I'm going to overlap each of the letters so that they are one object. And then I'm going to join these ones right here. And at this point I can see that everything is lined up and if I click off of the reshape to the select, I can see that it's about 280 right now and later on I'll probably resize this just a little bit but I can work with it at any scale because it's object base. The one thing that I will want to make sure that I do is select these objects and I'm going to go into my lettering and I'm going to break them apart. So again it's broken it apart to each letter and I'll hit it again, I'll break it apart one more time and I'll con continue to select all of the objects until the break apart has grayed out. That means that it cannot be broken apart anymore and this also means that I can start working with the font. Now because I'm going to create one shape with this, I do need to make sure that everything's nice and clean before I start. So I'm going to hit the B for zoom in. I'm going to zoom into this object and I can see that there is some little gaps in areas. So I'm going to hit that H key again and this will allow me to go in and make sure that there is no kind of open spaces, that everything does overlap properly. I want to make sure that there's nothing that doesn't uh, have any spaces between it. I'm also going to come here and probably hit that uh, point that is a straight node and put it to a curve right now and I might just come in and try to clean this up a little bit so it looks uh, just a little bit more natural uh, within these objects. So I can just come in here, grab that one, just clean them up ever so slightly. And they don't have to be perfect, but I can just go in and grab these objects. This one will probably look better as a curve as well instead of a straight. And then as I go through each of the pieces, I again just want to make sure that everything is actually underneath of all the other objects. So all of these look nice and clean. And I'm just checking them very, very quickly to make sure that they look clean. This one I actually could bring in all the way under so that it looks a little cleaner. And I'll just go over to this object here. That one kind of looks fine. So I'll leave that one as is. With this one right here, I'm going to zoom in a little more, hit the B key, go all the way around. And I can see that I might want to just kind of clean that up and change some of these to curves so that those curves look a little cleaner on the inside. The reason why I'm, you know, kind of making these look a little bit cleaner and smoother is as I'm generating all of these different shapes, and connecting them together, I want to make sure that when I weld all of these pieces together, I get a nice smooth weld all the way through. So I'm going to go over here, hit the B key just onto the Y, select it, and again, same thing. I might want to change a couple of these nodes so I have nice clean objects as I'm going through, and I might want to, you know, make that a little bit thicker on there. This one looks pretty good, but I can also just move this to make sure that it is fully underneath. Same thing here. I could make that a curve and this one a curve. That looks a little bit more natural. And those ones are all good. So as I look at this now, I can see that it looks a little cleaner than it did before. I could spend a lot more time kind of making this perfect if I wanted to. So I can actually add nodes if I want to. So I'm going to make that a curve as well. And then I can start playing with these so that they get a little bit more natural. Make sure that one's rounded and just make sure that all of these are nice and smooth as they're moving forward. That's my main objective is to just make sure that everything looks kind of smooth and natural from this point forward. And that one looks pretty good. I might just take this one and move that one up a little bit, this one over. 
and I think that looks pretty clean. Hit the zero key so that I am full screen and this one is ready to actually weld together now. So I'm going to select the entire object. I can click on the color and select the entire color or I can do control A which selects the entire object. You can see when the true view is off that it is selected. And now I'm gonna to go to objects and I'm gonna tell it to weld the entire object. So now everything is welded and it's all one piece. So in the objects, it's only showing one piece. And if I turn the true view on, it is actually all going in one direction. Now, if we have a flexi fill for this, which we actually do, we could save a whole bunch of steps and just, you know, have this done kind of automatically. But this does show you that all of this is possible with any font. And I can go in here and select my object right now. So let's select that, hit the H key for reshape. I might want to just kind of move that one over and I can see that it's saying it's got to cross over in a line so let's just move that one and it does not want me to play with that so I guess I can't cross over on a fill let's see if I can go this way nope so I'm gonna to have to leave that one as is or if I do undo that to the original I could fix that shape as I you know started as opposed to trying to do it after the fact and I think that's what I'll do I'll just come in here and again, this is part of the you know beautiful thing about playing with your ESA object-based files is you do have full control over all of these pieces. So I can come in here and control all of these objects, control all of the directions. Everything is at my fingertips. I'm gonna make that one a curve, that one a curve. And then let's just grab this one and do this. So now I know it's gonna be nice and clean. That looks nice and smooth now. And then I'll just hit the escape and let's go back to zero, which is going to give me my full screen. I'm gonna hit the select all again. So let's select all of these objects. Just have to select them all, and then I'm going to weld them together. And this time it looks a lot cleaner, and I think I should get much better results. Now that I have my base shape, I'm gonna to go to my colors, and I'm gonna make sure I select the in the sequence the first color and I'm going to right click on it while it is selected I can see the black box around it and I'm going to duplicate it and as soon as I hit duplicate I'm right away going to go down and choose another color and then I'm going to right click and duplicate again and I'll choose another color so I have three colors all on top of each other you can't see the blue or the red because it's being covered up by the green and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to take these objects and turn them into my mylar effect and then I'm going to actually have it so that it does a uh, you know a stitch effect around the outside of it so I might as well do the stitch effect around the outside first so I'm going to grab that object it's selected right now and I'm going to tell it to do an outline now I can see I have an outline around the entire object and I'm going to go to backstitch and this is going to give me a backstitch border and I'm going to do let's say five passes to add a little bit more of a you know backstitch in that and I'm going to leave everything else pretty much the same now I'll turn off the true view for one second and I'm going to take a look at this and I'm going to zoom into one area and just check all of these stitches because what I found in the past is sometimes when I change to a back stitch there's some areas within the objects that don't look 100% clean. Let's just back out for a second and just visually if I look right here on the design and I'm going to zoom in just to this part right here I can see that it looks like it is missing a little bit of that uh, five you know pass run on there so I'm going to hit that H and I can see that there are two nodes right on top of each other and as soon as I deleted the node you can see that it did actually create the back stitch I'm going to undo that and then I'll bring it back forward and I can see the same thing over here so I'm going to delete one of those that back stitch is fixed and I'll just run through these objects and anywhere I see some areas like right here where the back stitch has been affected I'm just going to delete nodes so that I don't get any single stitches like here's another single stitch I'll just delete one of those and then it uh, you know did the the stitch that I'm looking for here's another one right here and if I delete one of these then it fixes it up so there is a little bit of you know fine-tuning with this and just running through the design quickly and you know making sure that it's doing the type of stitch and the amount of repeats and back stitches uh, as I want 
and it doesn't take long but it will give you much better results so now that I have all of that cleaned up I know that my border is done now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that second color now and I'm going to take this second color and I'm going to select it so let's just grab the objects I select that second color and I don't want it on reshape but I want it on select I can see when I turn off the true view that it is actually selected by turning pink and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change it to a tatami stitch now when I did the tatami stitch I can change the stitch length from 0.4 to let's say one millimeter which would be good for a mylar design I'm going to do a travel on edge stitch so that I can see that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my reshape options and I can see within the reshape if I change it to a tatami with the reshape there's still all of these angles on here and I just want it to be one angle so what I'm going to do is while it is selected I'm going to go to my um, editing and I'm going to actually say remove stitch angles now it's removed all of those stitch angles and if I go back to this object here and hit the H key again I can see that there is only one angle to deal with as opposed to all of those different angles so I'm gonna leave that one exactly the way it is I have the one millimeter spacing travel on edge four millimeters and then I'm gonna go to this first object here and this one I'm going to tell it to be a outline and I want to have a single run and I am going to get rid of, if I look at all of these objects, let's just go to our select as opposed to shape. I just want a run around the first part of it. So let's just get here. <clears throat> I'm going to unselect all of these other objects. And I'm not sure why it's selecting the whole thing, but we'll just come back here. And there we go. So I'm going to grab that first one. I'm going to grab these ones here. I'm going to delete them. So all it's going to do is this first stitch here. I'm going to change that to blue. So it's going to do a running stitch to hold down the mylar. Then it will do the fill stitch to hold it in place. I have to go to my effects right now. Make sure that there is no underlay because I don't want any underlay on the design. So I can see a run stitch. I'm going to hit the H key to see where the start and stop is. Here is the start. And I might as well start my uh, stitch right here and then I need to tab to the next object and I want to make sure that uh, if I go back it started here and stop there for the run so the next one I want to make sure that it starts in the exact same place as the stop and then I can finish all the way over here maybe at the end so this will control the pathing and then my next object which is this one I could have it start right here where I ended off so my starts and stops are all running logically in order and if I look at this now I have a uh, mylar design that ends up having the running stitch go down first and if I go to the player you're going to see the running stitch go down first then it's going to do the fill which is a very loose fill and then it does all of the outlines on there and I do see one area where I need to go in and clean it up right on that C there so while I'm here I'm going to zoom in and let's just go right to here in this area I'm going to select this object right here hit that H key and let's get rid of a couple of these nodes there we got rid of that node and we'll just get rid of this one and now it is no longer doing that single stitch so as you go through if you see anything that needs to be kind of modified or changed you can very easily go in clean it up and that looks like a very nice clean mylar design but now we need to run, uh, I guess uh, create an applique so we're going to do an applique first so now we're going to do the applique and I'm just going to grab the fill that has the mylar so that's number two in my sequence list and I'm going to go to my create layouts and under the layouts and offsets I'm going to click on that and I am setting it at a six millimeter offset and a stitch uh, count of one so it's only going to do one line of stitches with a single run I am going to tell it to include the holes within the design and I'm going to click OK and make sure that this visually looks all right so that's what it looks like right here and it gave me the you know piece on the inside I might change that a little bit so you can always go and undo something I can select the same object I can go back to create offsets and I'm going to tell it to maybe do something like this instead I just want to see how that hole is going to be created 
and that actually looks a little bit better. I like how this hole is a little sharper on the inside and not so rounded as it was before. So this one looks pretty good, uh, but I could, if I want, see how the other one works as well. And that's the beautiful thing about, you know, playing with all the settings within the software. You can, you know, just click different buttons, see how things look when it's done. And that one actually looks pretty good too. So I think uh, either way, this one's almost exactly the same. This one does give you more of straight edges. So I'll probably go back to the last one that I did and see how that one looks. So let's just go right over here and make sure that I grab this object again. I'm going to go back to create offsets and layouts. Let's go back to the original one and see how this one looks. This one I actually kind of like how it has kept things rounded. The only thing I don't like is that one object there. So here's the beautiful part of the software. I can always come in. I can zoom into part of the design, hit that H key. And when I hit the H key, I can take this now, move it all the way down in here and make it a straight point and that gave me exactly what I'm looking for so even if the software doesn't create something the way you'd like it to be you can always go in and very easily modify it afterwards and that's exactly the effect that I was looking for so now that that is done I'm going to take this object here and I'm going to move it down in the sewing order now this is going to show me where to place my applique so I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to uh, control hit both of those and I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going in it's down in the bottom order I'm going to actually hit the uh, different color so it's going to give me a different color around the uh, bottom there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first one that I did and move it up to the top and I'm going to get rid of that little center piece that I created because I really just want a first color that is going to show me where to lay down my piece of twill then the next one is where I do want it to have both of those objects and I'm going to take that move it up into the second area and I could also then come in and duplicate that one more time and I'm going to move each of these up and I'm going to move them in place individually so that it does a double run. I didn't want it to do the outline and then the inside and outline and inside because there'd be extra jumps and trims. So this way I've done it in two pieces and then two more pieces. After it does that, then I can grab two of these right here and let's duplicate those one more time. So I'm going to duplicate those and I'm going to, after I duplicate them, have them right there. And with these, I'm going to go to my outlines and I want to make sure that with this, I go to a satin stitch. So there's my satin stitch border around the outside. I'm going to make that a little bit wider, maybe three millimeters, just so it's nice and thick for an applique. And then I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to make sure that when I click on stitches, I don't want any underlay. I don't really need any underlay for that. Or actually, I guess I, no, I don't because I'm going to actually do something different. Let's use a uh, hand effect in here. This is going to give me a very, very random, rough looking effect. I can control the randomness of this. I'm going to do, let's say, a three, which is going to make it, I can also test it and do a four, see how it looks. I can do a different variant. I can go up to five, see how it looks. So you can basically create all kinds of different looks and textures. If I turn my true view off, you can see just how staggered it starts to look. And let's, uh, you know, from here, let's try a three. But that gives me a nice, you know, random look to this and a different variant look. And I could, you know, create that like that. I could also add a bit of, you know, feathered weight on either side. That would really make it look random. But I'm going to turn that one off. So let's remove that effect. This is just going to give me that hand stitch look. So when it's actually done, it doesn't look perfect. It'll look sort of a little bit uh, uh, vintage and rustic when it actually sews. So as you play, you can actually do a little, you know, recipe sheet where you start to play with the, the roughness and the mass. You can do actually a, a three or a five count of thread. We're going to leave it to the one count right now, but this is a really, really cool tool that will allow you to create that vintage look using a satin stitch at a click of a button. So this design is pretty much ready to go, but we have to take this right here and we need to move this one right up in the sewing order, kind of like this. So I'm going to move this right up here and I can keep these the same color. Uh, if I am cutting this out, I would probably do both of these 
cut it out and then it'll finish that last stitch so I'm going to change the color of this one so it's a different color so again if I look at this now in my player I can see that I have my first stitch which is going to be my placement for my twill then it's going to do a double stitch to hold it in place and I cut it out after it's held in place then after it's cut out I'm going to do this hand stitch look around the outside with a three millimeter stitch and then after that's done it's going to do the mylar, it's going to hold the mylar in place, do a very loose fill so it's going to look nice and sparkly and then finish it off with that decorative stitch around the outside and we have a really cool design now that looks great and it's going to fit perfectly on our machine. This is actually, uh, you know, 131 by 294. I couldn't have planned it any better. It's going to fit perfectly on a 200 by 300 hoop and it'll be a full front sweatshirt with a relatively low stitch count. So the stitch count on this one is 26,000, almost 27,000 for a full front uh, sweatshirt applique with a sparkly effect, you can't go wrong.